Lolly Hero, everyone, and welcome to. Well, I mean, the, the title screen's right there. Welcome to Let's Play Shadow Games. This is the other game that I uh, may have mentioned. Now, I don't know, I thought Infocom. I wonder if ICOM stands for Civic Infocom. Or if maybe they're different companies, I mix the two together. I don't need to know anymore. But. As far as I remember, this title screen doesn't do anything interesting. I'm just letting it sit here for a second while I discuss this game. So, as a kid, I used to be terrified to play this game. In fact, I will even go so far as to say this gave child me nightmares. Uh, one thing in particular. But, it's... It is considered by a lot of people to be Moon Logic the game. Uh, death the game. A lot of different things you can call this. Okay, then these are just loops, that's all. So, now I didn't play the original uh, Mac or DOS version of this. Um, DOS apparently had a interesting thing that you could type in commands and such, but anyway. <clears throat> the last thing that you remember, standing before the wizard Lakmir as he waved his hands. Now you find yourself staring at an intruder which lies at the edge of a forest. The druid's words ring in your ears. Within the castle's shadow gate lies your quest. The dreaded warlock lord will use his black magic to raise the behemoth from the dark depths. The combination of his evil arts and the great titan's power will surely destroy us all. You are the last of a line of kings. The seed of the prophecy that was foretold eons ago. Only you can stop the evil one from darkening our world forever. Fare thee well! Gritting your teeth, you swear by your god's name, and you will destroy the warlock lord. So, welcome to the interface of Shadowgate. So, we have uh, different verbs uh, look, take, uh, open, close, use, hit, I never use leave. I have no idea what it does. I'm assuming it's the same as put. Kind of the opposite of take. Uh, I never use it. Ever. Um, you also have move. And the move icon has this really cool little mini-map kind of thing going. So, it, every one of these squares is an entrance in the room. So, it's, there's only one entrance because it's this one door. So it's the only one here, but as we move through the through the uh, game, you'll see dots appearing kind of all over the place, based on whether they're the where the position is, whether it's forward, backward, left, right, up in the corner, etc. Now we have our menu here. This is our inventory, which is always on screen, and the card system it allows you to cycle through your inventory. So we have goods, and we have spells, and we have neither of either. Um, is that the right word? Like, we have none of either, but I don't know if... <sighs> forgive my faux pas in English. Anyway, we also have the self command, which by itself doesn't do anything, and we have the save command. Now, this game's save is a three-slot uh, save system, but the thing is, is that you can only save on the slot you're on, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so it's not, you can't rotate your saves here. Fortunately, I will do my best to prevent any major problem. I'm starting to think and remember if I know the whole game front to back like I believe I do. Um, there's a few moments that I'm probably going to be resorting to uh, reaching into the depths of my memory. I say it like that because I... I know the game's plot, I know, know how to get through the game. Um, I do want to show some of the more interesting things in the game. Parts where you mess up. Uh, but anyway, one other thing is, you may notice we have a torch. And we have a blank torch over here. These are actual items. We only have one torch at the bottom. Uh, torches are very important, and you'll understand more about that later. So let's look around. So, we have a door. It's a heavy wooden door with iron hinges. Okay. 
Now, look stayed selected, so I don't have to constantly hit look again. Uh, let's look at the wall. It's a stone wall. Well, that's pretty descriptive. The ground. You seem to be wasting your time. Yeah, that's a generic message. Well, let's look at this little skull level. It's the skull of some creature. Its meaning seems quite clear. Death works inside. Well, it's not wrong. So, let's open the door. The door is open. It's the door leading into the castle, Shadowgate. Oh, by the way, your main character actually does have a name. His name is Prince Jer. Uh, he's not been coronated to king yet, but he is the last of the kings, apparently. Um... But that kind of brings a question with the end of the game. We'll get to that when we get to that. Anyway, uh, don't worry, I know what to do with this screen. It's not just an intro screen, but I want to get along with uh, kind of how the player would normally go through. That's pitiful wizard Lockbill is a fool to send a fool like you to stop me. You will surely regret, but the only thing here for you is a horrible death. The sound of maniacal laughter echoes in your ears. So, let's look around here. And we have a, this wooden door is reinforced with heavy sheets of steel. And even though this door is only an inch thick, it's very sturdy. You see the waste of your time. Okay, nothing important there. What's these? Uh, it's a torch. An oil-soaked rag is wrapped around it. So, we're going to take everything that ain't nailed down. Take the torches in hand. And the torches in hand. The game is honestly very, uh... What's the word I'm looking for? It's very generous with the hitboxes on most items. Now, if we try to open this door, the door is locked. If we try to open this door, the door is also locked. Well, what gives? We haven't found a key yet. Um... Can we... There's no move command, so... Can we take the rug? You can't take it. Can we burn the rug? That's actually a question. Can I burn the rug? Oh my god, you can. Huh. I didn't know that rug burn. What if you could burn all the rugs? I don't want to burn all the rugs. Anyway, so we're back at the entrance to Shadow Gate. You can hear wolves howling deep in the forest behind you. That's an interesting thing. So, let's open the skull. As if by magic, the skull rises. That... That's the kind of puzzles that you have to deal with, though. Random verbs on random items. That why would you open the skull? But he won is in hand. So let us go. Just have one quarter, a huge stone arm space, light up. Yeah. Well, let's test the key one on the little door. And it doesn't fit no key one. Okay, let's test key one on the second door. There we go. Click the keyword. Didn't lock the door. Alright, this is a good time to save. Now, of course, you can set yourself into Dead Man Walking. Trust me, that happens. But fortunately, right now, it's not. Oh, yeah, I'm not hitting them. I have to actually slightly move. No. Ah, the stone walls seem uncomfortably close as you walk down the stairs. There is something odd out of the ordinary about this torch, but you can't put a finger on it. Huh, interesting. It's a torch, and a little set of a rag is wrapped around it. Well, let's take our torches. Huh, that torch is in a different slot. It's a strange torch. And those are just regular torches. What's this? ancient tomb. It seems that no one has disturbed its pages for centuries. What's this thing it's sitting on? It's a pretty lucky. Is it those candles? 
It's a small candle, perfect for reading. Oh, is that the hint? Oh my god, after all these years, I finally get the actual hint. Anyway, so you're wasting your time. There's a lot of that. It's a stone. And if we look here, I think it says a hallway lies around the corner. Yeah. So, well, let's get the book, shall we? When you remove the book from its pedestal, the floor collapses, and you fall to your death. It's a sad thing that your adventures end up here. This screen is what used to scare the devil out of me as a kid. Anyway, it does give you a continue option. It starts you from one room back. So... That, that leads to some hilarious shenanigans later, but... And don't worry, we're getting to that. <laughs> so, we take the torch. We take the torch. But don't take the book. However, now that I've realized, because I've never looked at the candle before, it's perfect for reading, so why don't we open the book and read it where it sits? A rectangular hole has been cut out of the inside of the book. If you don't look at the candle, that seems really random. After looking at the candle, it makes perfect sense. Of course, granted, it makes perfect sense since I know that that's what you're supposed to do. This key bears a skull. It must be a skeleton key. Cute. Anyway, let's take the key. Key 2 is in hand. And just for the sake of keeping our cards cleared, let's go ahead and close the book back. As long as you don't remove the book from the pedestal, the trap does not trigger. So let's go this way. The stones in these walls were probably cut by the hands of an enslaved mountain force. That's an odd thing to just randomly come up with, but okay. I like the world building. That door is open. I probably should have looked at the door first. You know what? Let's close the door. There we go. Now we can look at the door properly. Oh, hey. Hmm, this torch throws dancing shadows about the room. Huh. It's a heavy wooden door with iron hinges. Are they all heavy wooden doors with iron hinges? Oh no, this door seems to be uh, made of solid oak. Oh, this door. It's a finely crafted wooden door. Don't know what wood it's made of, but it's fine. Okay, now let's open all of them. Uh-oh. What's the sound? Folks, if you hear this sound, this music, while playing the game, uh, deal with it immediately. But me, I'm going to ignore it. You enter a cold room, and the stench of flesh and decay pervades the small chamber. You begin to shiver, this room's really cold. Oh no, what what possibly could, could be happening here? Let's just keep looking. It's a large pedestal with iron trim. It's a small hole in the wall, some three inches deep. It's a torch, a little snake rag is wrapped around it. Okay, nothing special about these torches, let's take them. There we go. Your torch goes out with a fizzle. With outstretched hand, arms, you move slowly, looking for a light. Suddenly, you trip over something. Smash! You fall face first to the floor. Yes. So, this music that it's no longer playing because it has revived my torch, which is hilarious, um is a signifier that your torch is running out. And if your torch, if you were ever without a single torch lit, it's over. Even if there's fire in the room, game doesn't care. So if you are paying close attention, you notice that your torch turns small like this. Now you have a few turns before it starts getting close to going out, but you can go ahead and use a torch. Now you can obviously use the flame torch, the lit torch, 
on torch to light it, or you can just say use torch. And the torch is lit. So you use one torch to light the other, and now we have our second torch. So it doesn't matter what happens to this torch now, we want to keep an eye on this torch because it's the newest. So that's how the, the quote unquote timer of this game works. You only have as much time as you have torches. <laughs> So let's go ahead and take those torches. Now we looked at the, these two things last time. Let's uh, continue looking at the door. Uh, it's a finely crafted wooden door, apparently. It's as fine as the other door. And it's a small trap door made of polished metal. Well, let's come in here. We'll check out the trap door later. What's in here? Fear grips you as you enter this hot room. Well, what is, what, is, what is this? All you can see are two eyes in the darkness. They seem to be watching every move you make. So... Let's arm ourselves. Whoosh! Flames suddenly shoot from the dragon's mouth. Dragon flame engulfs your body. You pay for your curiosity with your life. And it's a sad thing to have your adventures or have your it's a sad thing your adventures have ended here. Anyway, so yes. Now the beauty of that is that, you know, let's not go in there after all. Let's check out this this little hatch here. Uh, the door is open. It doesn't tell me I can't look down it. Nope, it just says the door is open. Well, okay then. A broken fragment of a wooden ladder hangs from the opening. As you go down the trap door, you realize you took a big step. The fall is quite fatal. <laughs> You're getting a sense for how this game is. Um, now, because the previous room that we came through was technically a death, it just restarts us at the beginning of this room. So the game is relatively smart about that. It's not going to death loop you. But if you've made a mistake and you can't do something, then yes. Now, what we need to deal with this dragon is actually in this room. Uh, so let us take the proper thing. Let's arm ourselves in defense instead of, instead of offense. You raise your shield just in time to block the dragon flame. So, well, we need a torch. Let's go ahead and grab a torch. Torch is in hand. Whoosh! Again, flame spews forth. You use the shield for protection. It's getting hot. You don't know how much longer you can stand. Uh, let's grab a hammer. And this same message again. It's getting hot. You don't know how long you can stand it. Uh, let's get the spear. Now, we technically don't need anything else in this room. But, just because I want to show it off. Tech skull. And I think... There we go. The shield melts under the intensity of the dragon flame. Your body fares no better. Not even your best friend can recognize your burning body. And that's it plays this message again. So the way that gimmick works is that you have a certain number of turns with the shield before it melts. So that you have, you have I wanna say it's four turns. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's four turns. You have to get out of there before the fifth fire. You pick up a shield first, that's one. Two. Three. That's the wrong thing. Three. And just because torches are very, very important, we're gonna go ahead and grab the torch. And that's it. Now, you can come back here later. That's one of the reasons why this room back here is so cold. The basic idea is this room is so cold that the shield immediately begins to cool, 
and it can take another several blasts from the Dragon Flame. I'm not going back in there for now, though, because we got what we need, uh, we got all the important items, the Russianers' bones and such, and we might not need them. Again, we'll get to that if we need to. So we have this message, let's go to the right. Hello, Shark. The shark swims by as if patrolling this calm pool. The waters of the Subterranean Lake are still as a corpse. Oh! Hello, Torch. Whoosh. There we go. Alright. A lime-covered skeleton stares at you through the eyeless sockets. Now, I want to say that this game, the NES version of this game, actually censored by removing a death. There is a, uh... There is a death involving trying to take the key. You can't reach it from here. Swimming the shark-infested pool would be suicidal. This is the message that you get if you try to uh, go into the water, I believe. Like, can I just move in the water? Oh no! Here we go. Never mind. They did actually let you kill yourself with a shark. As you swim towards the skeleton, you feel the jaws of a shark grab you and pull you under. You curse yourself for using your body as bait. Even before the life has left your body, the lake will be filled with your blood. I forgot they didn't say- oh no, no, but that's right, I think they just changed how you get it. Um, you could used to, I believe, I, I remember, it's hard to remember all the details about this game that I've picked up over the many years of playing it, um, and doing research on it, you know, reading things about it, watching videos. Um, I want to say you used to have to take the key, but they changed it where you have to actually enter the water instead. Uh, I don't know. They did change a few things, putting it on the NES from the PC, though. So, aside from the major interface, because, yeah. Water cascades over a subterranean cliff into a cool, clean stream. Okay, so our one torch is about to go out. Let's go ahead and light this. This is basically the same lighting as... Theoretically, you can just eat deaths with the torch. Uh, torch goes out every few steps, you know, that kind of thing. As long as you're making progress in rooms, you just can't spend too long in one room doing that. The game is fair enough, though, to let you not softlock yourself if you're completely out of torches. It just makes it very tedious. Now, you can get more than one, but I only really need one. But we're gonna grab a second, just in case. Because I'm bad at my job. Anyway, if you look right here, it's very dark. Landslide looks like it occurred ages ago. It would take you months to clear it away. The way up this staircase is obstructed by a landslide. I have no idea what's up there, to be honest with you. But there is a dark space here, so if we move right here. Yep, the walls in this room are much too close for comfort. The damp walls of this eerie cavern are rough and irregular. So... This rock... This rock juts... Just? It's supposed to be juts out from the wall. That's funny. Okay, well, let's... It worked with a skull, let's open a rock. It won't. Um... Let's hit the rock. You hit the rock as hard as you can. Pow. The loose rock falls downward as if hinged to the wall. It's all in our pouch. Well, what's in the pouch, Mr. Jair? Bag one is open. The bag contains three large jewels. Oh ho ho, we have jewelry. Let's take them all. We'll look at them later. Greed sets in. Alright, let's close the bag and leave the bag here. Alright. The white gem. It's a white stone of unknown origin. A fine thing to gamble away to a good card game. That's random. It's a fine red ruby. Its color reminds you of your adventure across the sea of blood. Okay. 
It's a dark blue gemstone that's as big as the pommel of a sword. Wait. That game didn't come out yet, did it? Wait, this was 89, right? Couldn't be. That would be hilarious if that was the case, but now I'm fairly certain that has nothing to do with uh, Tombs and Treasures. One probably is referencing the other, but there's no telling which one's which. Um, plus, it's a big, huge thing with uh, fantasy adventures about having magical stones set to the palm of the sword. Anyway, um, well, we've gone to the left and gone to the right. Let's open the back door. Uh, this long, cold hallway is lined on either side by half a dozen coffins. This room is not fine. This tomb is sealed with a silver lid. The cold marble coffin lid seals an ancient deathbed. That's a weird thing to say. It's a cold stone coffin. The lid of this coffin is made of solid gold. It must be worth a fortune. The standing sarcophagus is sealed with a dragon scale cover. Uh, I don't think saving is going to really help me here because it's still going to push me back out of the door. Uh, but as you might know, might think, we can open a few of these coffins. So the stone one is sealed shut. I can't open that one. But if we steal, if we open this one, hey, hey a bag. A leather leather pouch. Again, what's in the pouch, Jim? Copper coins. Hey, wait a minute. This is no gold coin. It's but a brass slug. Or a royal rip. Yeah, not very helpful, not very important. But you know what? We might be able to fool some of these. You never know. Let's open this one. Whether the coffin is open, a mummy stands silently before you. This carefully involved six footer stands straight and still. Uh, can we open the mummy? It won't open. Can we hit the mummy? Nothing happened. on the mummy. Nothing happened. Find that. He's wrapped in bandages. They're age old. Burn the mummy. The mummy bursts into flames, leaving behind a scepter among the ashes. Does that actually make sense to anybody? <laughs> the scepter is in hand. The jewel studded scepter is truly made for a king. I'm gonna make a uh, kind of a room state save here. Save myself as well. So let's open this coffin. As you open the tomb, a banshee flies out and emits an ear-shattering scream. You're alright, but it's very hard to hear. And yes, you can keep doing that. And no, it doesn't kill you. But I know something that does. The lid of the coffin is open. This green slime is quite disgusting. The green slime is very thick, warm to the touch. Ugh. Let's just go away. You try to pass the slime, but it engulfs your body, dissolving it in seconds. You die instantly. No pain, no nothing. You were slimed. And that's actually why I moved back. Uh, if you open the silver coffin. 
that becomes an impassable barrier. You have to circumnavigate this room, and we haven't done that yet, so I don't want to make things too obvious. I mean, obviously mentioning that I can circum uh, circumnavigate this room doesn't technically say, hey, there's another way through. And there is, but we'll get to that. This room is full of mirrors. Or this room full of mirrors reminds you of the Elven Funhouse at King Otto's Fair. Excuse me? I would love to know more about this. I, I like world building, but it's starting to get out of hand, I think. This room looks remarkably like the one owned by the Sirens of the Isle of, Ye of Yeklam Eret. Okay, I'm just gonna go with it. Uh, the mirror has a curved oak frame. That mirror also has a curved oak frame. This mirror throws back a fine reflection. Okay. And there's a hole. It's very dark. Well, the last time we went to a place that was very dark, we found a hidden cave with gems in it. You jump down the hole and, after a couple of moments, hit the floor. It seems that you've broken both of your legs. It's only a matter of time before you die. It's a sad thing to have that your adventures have ended here. Yes. So, because technically we move forward to die, it put us back up here. Um, so, and in fact, that's actually one of the reasons that it backs you up a room. Because of going through a room and dying immediately in the other room. Um, so... Oh, <laughs> oh that yawn came out of nowhere. Um, we can do stuff in this room. So, we can hit the glass. Yeah, let's break some mirrors. And nothing happened, though. Our hands aren't hard enough. Well, the only thing else we have that's going to do anything to a mirror is a hammer. Let's break the mirror. As soon as you break the mirror, shards of glass fly through the air and slice into your body. Blood pours from your wounds, and your body slumps to the floor. Well, that's a thing that just happened. So, note to self. Don't break the left mirror. Bellowing like some Norse god, you smash the hammer into the mirror. You shatter the mirror, revealing an iron door. Huh, okay. A solid iron door lies beyond the broken edges of the mirror. Well, let's have some fun. Let's break the third and final mirror. You have opened a magic portal into deep space. You are immediately sucked through. The lack of air causes you to quickly lose consciousness. The Grim Reaper quickly embraces you. Aww. Thanks, Grim. So, yes. Uh, so obviously the correct answer is to hammer the middle. It's also the only one that gives a fine reflection. I think it's because the metal behind it uh, something to do with how mirrors are made. Uh, it's glass and metal together that create a reflective surface. And because this is an iron door, it makes a much better reflection. That's, of course, my assumption to what the clue is. I could be very wrong, and it could just be a different message. Uh, oftentimes, these kind of games, it's all it was. So it would not surprise me if that's all it was. But I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say it's because of how mirrors work. So we take our torches. Now, we can't go in there, technically. And I think it's because, actually, there's maybe a different reason why we can't go in there. Now that I think about it, do we have, because if we try to open the door, I think it's locked. Yeah, door's locked. Okay, and key one, we've already used key one. These keys are single use. Uh, let's try key two. I don't think key two goes to this door. It does not. So... Uh, we can't do anything with that yet, so let's go back the way we came, since obviously the hole in the floor will kill us.
Okay, we just had a torch go out. The way for me to change. Uh, let's go back. In fact, let's go back one more. Because we do have a second key now. We know key one doesn't work there. But key two might. So let's use key two on this door. Yes, it does. Okay. Oh, as you enter, you see a sword of sling inside. Question. Hold on. Can I leave? play with that and see if there's ever a reason to do that. Like I said, I've never used leave. We have a sling and a sword. Since so sling is a small leather sling, so it'll come in handy for long-range battles. And it's a double-edged broadsword. The handle has Druidic script written on it. That is a hard sense to say. Dramatic scripts, I think is how it's supposed to be spelled or pronounced, but who knows. Anyway, now astute viewers may notice that there is, in fact, the stone seems to set be set loosely in order. Hilariously, when I clicked the thing that's actually loose, it just says it's a stone wall. Huh. He thinks those two hits the things are backwards. So let's hit a wall. Pow. And the stone falls away to reveal a secret passage. Yes, this room also hides a secret passage. As soon as you enter the room, you see an arrow on the front wall. Okay. The sword seems fastened to the wall with rather modern looking nails. Huh. The torch is attached securely to the wall. Odd difference. A finely crafted silver arrow is not uncommon in the Elven lands. And on this ledge, a slab of concrete rests upon two stone supports, some ten feet from the floor. A ten foot, it's kind of a leap. We probably can get up there. First, let's grab that arrow, though. The arrow's in hand. Alright, so let's go through the door. The ledge wasn't strong enough to hold you. You fall to the ground and harm land hard on your wall. It doesn't kill you, but it is funny. It's trouble from a broken ledge. You can't get up there, by the way. It's impossible to get back up there. That's just a oops, you fall. So we can't take these torches because they're secured fast, uh, fastened to the wall. But that one is only fastened by modern looking nails, so maybe we can move it. Um, let's try using it. Nothing happened with that one. How about this one? You move the torch. So yes, it's a hidden door. There's a spiral staircase leading down. It's a switch. You stand at the edge of a deep chasm. From the darkness below arise the screams of the undead. This cave is hewn roughly in the chasm's wall. Well, that's a thing. This shabby bridge is held together with nothing but frayed ropes and rotten planks. The ropes are indeed in bad condition. Judging by the intricate workmanship, this bridge seems to be quite sturdy. So considering how much this game has been trolling us lately, you might consider, well, you know what, I bet this bridge has a hole in it, and that this bridge is actually sturdier than it looks, right? I mean, that, that's... By the time you get to this place, you're in that mindset where the game's gonna do that to you. As you reach the middle of the bridge, it collapses under your feet. The bridge won't hold you. You can't cross unless you lose some weight. No, instead, it circumvents your uh, preconception that it's going to troll you by trolling you the correct way. Like, nope, it was right the first time. It. This is one of the, the things I love about the game. Plus, it's, it then has proceeds to basically call you fat. Um. <laughs> It's, I, I love this moment of the game. This is my one of my favorite parts of the game. Because it's like, okay game, I get you. What's this? 
A wraith standing in your way, barring your path. So we have a wraith. It's the Shadow Wraith, a hideous specter who eternally walks the line between life and death. So, there is also, this heavy cloak contains no frivolous adornments such as pockets or a hood. It's a torch. Well, yeah, it's a regular torch, okay. So, we can try to attack it, um, first let's light a torch. So if we use a spear on it, nothing happened. Um, can we use a sword on it? Nothing happened. Nope. Can we use a sling on it? Waving around a sling in the air doesn't seem very useful. It won't work without stones. <sighs> okay, okay. Fair enough. I did put the stone in the sling. <laughs> now we have a sling. You whirl the sling over your head and release the stone. Not bad for a beginner. But the wraith is amused by your feeble attempts and utters an evil curse in you. Huh. I, I hope that doesn't mean anything. Actually, to my knowledge, it doesn't mean anything. It's nothing more than a reaction of you're on the right concept, but the wrong item. So yes, ranged is the way to go here. Uh, because you don't want to get, if you try to, uh, say you hit, uh, spec, uh, wraith, you're afraid to get near it. So we need something we can throw. We can try to torch the wraith. No, wait a minute, it's best you don't do that. This is a message to basically it's a specialized, generic message. Uh, it only says that message when you're doing something the game doesn't want you to do, usually using a torch on something that would cause the torch to go out. Uh, <laughs> it's not the only reason, but it's the main reason. So you, we have a special torch here. So why don't we use the special torch? No, okay, we have to start. You can't use a, a unlit torch on a lit torch. You have to use a lit torch on the unlit torch. The torch burns with a strange white flame. With a shout, you throw the flaming torch at it. With a blinding flash, the white flame engulfs the undead apparition. When you open your eyes again, the wraith is gone. So, yes. Now we can take our torches. You can take the torches anyway, but you couldn't reach in here and take it, because the re the wraith is in the doorway. So you, you can take the- <clears throat> Excuse me. You can take stuff on this side of the doorway, but on that side. But now we can actually take the cloak, too. <coughs> I said we can now take the cloak, too, if I would hit the right hotspot. Also, what, what is this? We can't see this. Huh, it's too high for you to reach. Oh, is that the other side of the arrow gate? That might be. Sorry if this music gets it's getting on the nerve. It's getting on your nerves. <coughs> this small stone chamber is lined on one side by two barred portals. Okay. It's a hemp rope. Well, okay then. Sturdy bars seal this cage. Your nose detects the presence of a concealed animal. Huh. Your faint scratching within the dark depths behind the bars. Ugh. Wait a minute. It's a small hole in the ceiling. This is the room we fell into. So we're right below the funhouse mirror room. It's an ancient leather bound parchment. Okay. It's a small silver bottle. What is it? It sure smells terrible. It's a small silver vial glows with lustrous shine. You notice that the bottle is impossibly light. Hmm. Interesting. Scroll one is in hand. Let's open the scroll. The scroll one is open. 
your hands begin to sweat because of your extreme excitement. Five to find, three or one. One gives access to the bladed side. The silver orb to banish blow, the staff of ages to vanquish the foe. Joining to the golden blade, the last to invoke the platinum. So we have a list. Five items that we need to find. Uh, it's already open. I think I should have to look at the scroll again. So. Five to find. Three are one. One gives access to the Bladed Sun. So the Bladed Sun is a key. The Silver Orb to banish the blow below. The Staff of Ages to vanquish the foe. Joining to the Golden Blade. So three are one. So it sounds like those three are one. Because of them all having generic uh, generic combinations there. And the last to invoke the Platinum Horn. Doesn't really give much of a clue as to what the horn's for, but... So Golden Blade, Staff of Ages, uh, Silver Orb, Bladed Sun, and Platinum Horn. Those are the four major items that we need to find. Five major. Did I say four? There are five major items. Three that are one, and then two that are something else entirely. The sign reads Epor. Epor, Epor, Epor. You got it! It seems to be some sort of magic word. You've learned one magic spell. It, it's literally wrote backwards. But, if you... I want to say this works. If you speak Epor... The spell was chanted, Epor. There are many strange things in this world. When you said the magic spell, the rope moved. Having stretched up to the hole, the rope stops moving. So now the rope is essentially a climbable bar. If you look at the rope now, I think you can look at the rope now, can't you? Ah, uh, you see we waste your time. What's down here? The rope stretched towards the ceiling and resists all efforts to move it. So yes, now we have a means of getting up. This is how you get around if you have pulled the slime out. And it's how you go down the hole without dying. But, one, we have a torch here still. Two, we kind of have to get these bottles, don't we? I mean, let's go ahead... No, I can't take nothing this. Let's go ahead and get those two bottles, and let's get this torch. And this is another one of those pixel hunt moments that if you look very closely, there's something odd about the back wall. It seems this part of the wall doesn't quite fit. Damp air is blowing out of a gap in the stone wall. Let's... You feel the ground shake as the rock moves aside, slow, or slowly aside to reveal a passageway. The cold water from the limestone drips on your neck, sending shivers down your spine. So this is a cold room. It's a stone wall. The conclave is- this is a conclave polygon. It seems to have been carefully carved into the stone. Well, The problem is, I know what goes there, but I don't know how you're supposed to figure it out. It's a gemstone. As was common in these kind of adventure games, you have a stone that opens a door. And in this case, it should be the blue gem. Again, I have no reason. Maybe it's in the manual. Maybe there's a thing in the manual, because unfortunately, when we played the game, all we had was the cartridge. We no longer had the box, so I didn't have the manual. And on this is this is generation of games where the manual was very, very important. I miss those days, actually. Anyway, <clears throat> as soon as you place the blue gem in the hole, you hear the sound of grinding stone. The wall slowly rises to reveal a magical image of an old wizard. Listen, warrior! The Warlock Lord can only be defeated by thy courage and the Staff of Ages. Remember, 
five to find, three for the staff, one to be the key, and one to be thy pathway. Have thy wits about thee, warrior. Fare thee well! So, he did confirm that three for the staff, so the staff of ages and two other pieces are coming together. One is the key, which we already know is the Blade of the Sun, and one is the pathway, which that has to be the, 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 the Golden Horn. So, the Blade of the Sun's the key, and the Golden Horn's the path, the Platinum Horn's the pathway. So, the other items all must go with the staff. The wall slides back into place, hiding the image from your sight. A scroll appears. Oh, let's open the scroll. Scroll 2 is open. You've read the scroll. The scroll reads, As the shadow of the wind thou shalt be. Kumama. You've learned one magic spell. As the spell was chanted, the scroll too quickly vanished. So now that we know the spell Kumama, yeah. So as the shadow of the wind you shall be. That's a interesting thing. The thing about magic in a lot of these older games is that uh, you have to have magic is very specific. There's no uh, like general use. You don't have invisibility magic. You have invisibility magic that only works with certain conditions. You don't have uh, which I mean that was obviously invisible because it's shadow of the wind. So, but it's very important. Shadow of the wind is very very important. So we don't have invisibility when we want to, it has to match the specifics of the spell. Now, I have a slight problem. We still haven't gotten what we needed, and I should have stopped all the way through. There is another room that we've seen that has a small, uh, innocuous looking imitation. Small hole, some uh, in the wall, some three inches deep. We didn't, we didn't look at it. We just didn't do anything with it. And again, just like with the blue gem, another gem goes here. And on process of elimination, you would eventually find this out. The gem fits perfectly in the hole. A small crystal sphere magically appears on the stand. This sphere, crystal sphere, is cold as ice. The sphere is in hand. So now we have the magical sphere. And the sphere is basically an ice crystal. Well, let's see how cold this ice crystal is, shall we? You drop the sphere into the lake and notice the ripples disappear as the water turns into ice. Yeah, we can now get through. If you look, the crystal sphere is cold as ice, and the lake has become a solid sheet of ice. Now, the sphere has fallen into the lake. It's not very clear on that, uh, but it will be important. But first, since we can walk across the ice, we can now get the key three. So can we take the sphere back? You can't take it. Again, it's under the ice. Now, we'll leave it here. That's fine. Sure, we don't need it anyway. The room full. This room full of mirrors reminds you of the fairy. Yeah, I'm just rereading it for whatever reason. I don't know why. Mentally, not all here, I think. Here we go. Click the keyword to unlock the door. Alright, let's go ahead. Wow. This room is incredibly hot. This be the lower levels of Gehenna are like. Gehenna is. the hell, basically. The heat is unbearable and you have to turn back. Well, that's interesting you say that. And let's do one of the most complicated and hilarious, in my opinion, deaths possible. So you can use items on yourself. You need to have terrific secondary burns in your hands. Good job, Jerry.
You hold the flame close enough to your skin to cause second and third degree burns. <laughs> just makes my hand itch. Like just you know, the whole skin crawling feeling. <laughs> you finally set your hair on fire. The rest of your body soon follows. And it's sad to have your adventure in here. And what is this? We're inside of the room that we were supposed to be able to get into because it immediately pushed us out. Yeah, you kind of have a little... But you can get in here by skipping that. We have the item we need to get in here without, by the way. But I figured it would be more fun to go this off. This tireless fire burns with such heat, this room seems to be the belly of hell itself. Now, why did it censor itself saying Gehenna earlier, and then just say Hell right there in the look description? That's weird. It's a heavy wooden door with iron hinges. Okay, then. Well, can we open this that door? Door's open. As suddenly, you feel a gust of wind. A searing blast of heat knocks you across the room. Flaming horror appears at the end of the bridge. Oh. Uh, well, um, <laughs> let's, let's fight fire with fire. You put the clothing horse. Oh god, it actually did it. The fire drink screams triumphantly and gives you an eternal sunburn. <laughs> Why? Why did he actually try that? That's so funny. Anyway. So. Yeah, you know what? You also do this. Bellowing like a fool, you leap off the bridge and into the blades. You are instantly fried. I had to. So, yeah. Let's, uh, let's get out of here. So. Hey, yes, I'm watching that torch. I'm watching my torch count. I gotta be careful, I know. I'm down to five torches. If you know what you're doing, you end up with a game with double-digit torches pretty easily. So... And speaking of torches... Okay, so let's get... This sphere, shall we? The sphere has put out the flames. So, I didn't necessarily have to show losing your life to the, the torch going out, uh, because I wanted to show that too. If you use the torch on the sphere, it puts out the torch. It doesn't care whether it's on the ground or whether it's in your inventory. You have to use the torch not on the sphere, but on the ice. Put the burning torch close to it. The torch melts away the ice over the sphere, allowing it to float to the surface. Not surprisingly, the lake quickly refreezes. And now, we can take the sphere. I wish I had a story of how long that took us to figure out, because I honestly don't. By the time I started playing this game, I knew that particular puzzle. I don't know how long it took my parents, and mom mainly, or my brother to figure that one out. And of course, we've been so hot, we have to turn back. So I could just kill myself again, and in fact, I will, uh, by using another thing. Any of your weapons will kill you if you use on yourself. You thrust sword into your chest, and it says you thrust sword. It'll see you can even with a hammer, and it's even more funny because you thrust hammer into your chest. Suicide won't help on your quest. The Warline Lord will surely triumph now. So, while we're in here, why don't we use the thing that helps us survive? This... cloak... You try on the cloak and you can find it very unbecoming. It barely fits over your armor. Um... I don't know why it messed up like that. But now... It's not like you begin to start profusely, but it doesn't force you out. With the cloak, you can actually survive in here, which is funny because cloaks would usually make you hotter. Anyway, 
Now you don't have to open this door and pull out the this guy here. That's optional. Let's use the spear on you. You hurl the spear into the fire below you. The hell spawn flames quickly vanish as soon as the spear touches them. With nothing to feed itself on, the fire drake immediately follows suit. Your view of the your view of the floor is totally obscured by a thick black oil. The suicide obviously does not solve problems, and that one is a little underwhelming. They could have given us a better death message from that, like maybe to say that. Uh, you sink to the bottom of the super hot oil that, you know, even though it's not on fire, it's still hot. Because it was just on fire. So, or maybe to say you suffocated or something, I don't know. There's a lot of things they could have done. But, that one was lazy. Not even gonna lie. Of all the deaths in the game, that one was lazy. And of course, as I said, you don't have to summon the fire tree. You extinguish the flame, and then if you open the door afterwards the fire drake never spawns. And, let's get one more death out of the way. Because I love deaths in this game. The oil quickly catches and sets you on fire. There is no way to put out the fire once it starts. You will be burned to the bone. Yeah, so there's a bunch of things I'm not to do. the sphere in. We're just going to ignore the room. Once you've hurled the sphere to the bottom of the, of the pit down here, that's all you have to do. So, just move forward. A sharp, cold wind whips up over the ledge of a deep, dark chasm. A strong, cold wind blows up from the chasm. It's a doorway. Uh... Okay, well, let's go across the doorway. As you step onto the bridge, a troll appears and says, This bridge is mine! It'll cost you a gold coin to cross. Oh. Uh, hi. A terrible looking troll is standing in the way. It's a literal bridge troll. Also. What up, troll? Now, the troll is not immediately going to kill you. Okay, he does not just kill you for you being here. Um, I think he may kill you for trying to cross, though. You can't do that. Okay, no, he doesn't kill you for trying to cross. Um, can I talk to him? The troll says with a strange face, Got nothing to say! Go away! Well, fine. Well, we don't have anything to give him. Um... We got copper coins. He said a gold coin, though. I mean, maybe he won't notice the difference? The troll says that the toll has just been raised two gold coins. <sighs> Fine. Uh oh. The troll shouts. Hey, what's this? This is gold? Are you trying to cheat me? The troll then picks up the bridge, causing you to fall into the castle. The Grim Reaper stands below, waiting to catch it. Ah, Grim, thanks. It's a sad thing your adventures have ended here. Folks, I've been going for like an hour so, so... I think this is a good place to stop off, right here, with the Reaper staring into your soul. And when we come back, we're gonna find a way past this troll that doesn't devolve trying to cheat him with copper coins that gets us killed. And we do have the means of getting past him, don't worry about that. But until then, we hope to see you again. Later.